Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and today we're doing something a little bit different. As you can clearly see by the title and thumbnail, I got kind of excited for the Final Fantasy VII Remake and my friend Lady Nanaki, the gal you know as Scarlet from our Pokemon D&D campaign, and I made a system that is meant to sort of capture the spirit of Final Fantasy VII and adapt it into a D&D or tabletop format. In fact, we are currently playing this game right now on that website that YouTube doesn't like me to say in a video, but many of you already know it because it rhymes with Bitch. Yes, the name of this website rhymes with bitch, as in YouTube is a bitch. For this game, my friends and I each rolled up a different character using this handy little chart I made. Characters you make should fit into the Final Fantasy VII setting, and these roles are meant to be more of guidelines than solid rules. Final Fantasy VII has all of their characters' abilities directly tied to them. I'll explain each one as we get to them, but don't think you're married to the dice roll if you get it. These are really flexible. In the race column, we've got six different races currently known to the Final Fantasy VII universe. Humans, Nanaki, Moogle, Awakened, you know, things like plushies or intelligent animals. Cetra, that ancient race that Aerith was. Or aliens, meaning characters like Cloud, who had Genova DNA, or Kadaj, who was a revenant of Sephiroth. Or, you know, Sephiroth himself. Next we have the jobs, and as I mentioned earlier, characters don't have jobs per se in Final Fantasy VII. They more have, like, combat archetypes. This is really only meant to kind of point you in the right direction. So for example, if you roll a black mage, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to play Vivi. You could just play a character who uses black magic, but maybe they're more of a fighter or something. This is meant to spark creativity rather than give you an exact flow chart of what to do. Next is starting materia, and this is what might confuse non-Final Fantasy VII fans. In this particular universe, you need materia to cast spells. The only characters who didn't need them were monsters, etc., or sometimes Sephiroth. If you need a quick breakdown of what each materia does, here you go. Summons lets you summon creatures like Bahamut Sin, magic lets you do black or white magic, command adds various effects like other things that just make you do stuff. Support enhances other materia, so maybe your character works well with someone else or is seeking a specific materia to go with. Feel free to think as obliquely with this as possible. Independent materia gives you automatic abilities like auto potion or stat boost, things like that. And then finally, advanced materia is stuff like plot relevant things. Like maybe you have a piece of the white materia or you have a piece of Zircania like Elf from Before Crisis. And finally we have backgrounds which can mostly help you determine your backstory. Just fun things like that. I'll be honest the sixth one was more inspired by my love for Final Fantasy Tactics and I just kind of threw it in there. However that doesn't necessarily mean it's not viable outside of this universe. Fun fact, apparently Final Fantasy X is sorta canon to Seven's universe, and the main character Titus and Auron are kind of isekai into the future, so like, maybe you could run with something like that? Who knows? Otherwise, feel free to have as much creative freedom as you want with this if you're just gonna use it as a writing prompt. If you want to actually play it for yourself, well, you're in luck. Everything I wrote up can be found in this Google Doc in the description down below. In it is the currently uh, da -da -da -da, 21 page document with everything we wrote so far. It's definitely a messy work in progress, so don't expect perfection when you get to it. But if you hop into our stream confused, feel free to check this as a reference. And of course, I'm gonna give you the characters we rolled up ourselves so you can kind of see how we work with this. Here's our first character, a Moogle named Sarge. As you can see, he rolled really high on his Moogle roll, so for that, we just gave him more HP. HP and more Moogle based abilities. X the Dark One decided he wanted him to be ex military with that background, and with a white mage role, we thought it would be kind of fun if he was kind of like a combat medic. He also rolled really well for his summon materia, so we just gave him the fat chocobo one and made it his war companion. He named it Jeep because the military uses Jeeps. Next, we got Duchess Angelica Frith. Frith. That name. And as you can see, Megami actually rolled pretty good on most of her things. She's a pretty powerful Cetra, which means she can use magic on her own, but since she rolled criminal and item-based for her background, we just kind of made her into this ninja or geomancer archetype who could cast nature spells and other jutsus. Also, Corinne thought it would be fun if she had like a split personality, so we rolled with that. A lot of her build was inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics with her having the ninja throwing capabilities and geomancer powers. Next, Lady Nanaki rolled a Nanaki. Shocking, I know. 
but she did really well with her body roll, but did so-so and everything else. So we just kind of turned her into an attack dog with some armor, but nothing special, but also nothing bad. The wackiest character might be my wife's, who we couldn't immediately figure out what to do with. She rolled really bad in her race and class, but really well with her materia summon and her experiment background. So we decided that she was actually a sentient plushie with the summon materia stuck into it to give her life. Alex did some research and she thought it would be fun if she acted like Gilgamesh from the other Final Fantasy games. So she's basically the Gilgamesh summon stuck into a plush body and we rolled her up like a spell blade with some vague stealing abilities. Naturally, I made some OC too, but if you want to see them, you'll have to head to our live stream. If you're watching this video in the future and you missed it, don't worry about it. We backed it up on my wife's channel called Elena Prana. By the time this is over, it will be public on that channel a day later. If you wanted to play this yourselves, in the description I included a link to a Google Drive folder which has all of our artworks, characters, maps, and everything we use. Special thank you to Damage Glasses in our Discord server who made the maps that recreated the tutorial missions from the video game. They're amazing. He wanted me to mention that these maps were made with assets from the Forgotten Adventures and that you should check them out on Patreon. If this picks up at all, Lady Nanaki and I might release more expansion packs and other patches to our game. Otherwise, see you guys at the live stream.